I'm Baroness B. Van Kidron. Um, I'm a crossbench member of the House of Lords in the UK, and I'm a campaigner for children's rights in the digital sphere. So the application of the United Nations Charter of the Rights of the Child across the entire world, including the virtual world, and specifically uh, backing a framework called Five Rights. I think it's a, a very sort of broad group of people coming together to say what kind of digital world are we going to have, who's going to have access, on what basis, and how quickly. And I think we all know that, you know, in the light of the Sustainable Development Goals, that there's a huge job of work to do. And I just want to make sure that we're thinking about children and young people as citizens, not just as consumers of education, uh, and not only as people who need to be protected online, but actually young people have rights in the world that need to actually be, they have expectation of rights in the world that should be available to them wherever they are, whomever they are, and that includes in the virtual world. So I'm sort of adding my voice to them. Since there is no young person here, I am a representative of that demographic. I think there's two things. One is that we mustn't mistake access for quality of access. So what we really need to do is, okay, there's the tube, now what's on top of it? What are people actually consuming? On what basis? At what price? And that's a price that isn't just a financial price, it's a sort of a cultural price, uh, questions of locality, of, of, of immediate culture, and also of, of demographic and so on. Um, so I think that's one big issue. And I think the other issue is that people always seem to think that technology is the answer, but a lot of the sort of stop points, the hold points, are actually human. So we actually have to look at the sort of human capital equation and say, what do we need to invest in technology? But what do we need to invest in human beings in order to let technology be the saviour that we all hope, we, hope it should be? And underneath those two things are really a question of private and public, who's paying, who's profiting, and where that balance lies. And I don't think anyone's going to dispute that there is a balance to be found, but perhaps there'll be a tussle about exactly where it lies. I think that the, the big thing for me is the commitment to, on the upside, I think the big thing for me has been the commitment to gender equality and seeing the sustainable goals as actually having to address that issue, sort of like writing through a stick of rock absolutely everywhere they go. So, you know, as a woman who was the only woman in my country, in my industry, making films at the beginning of my career, I really appreciate that at a sort of much broader level. And also as someone who really does believe if you educate a girl, you educate a family, uh, especially in the developing world, the evidence is overwhelming on that. So, so that's been a really big positive. I think the other thing is sort of education more generally and the idea of access for people who don't have access now, very powerfully spoken to, very powerfully sort of committed to by all players. I think that in the end, my big takeaway is the tussle about the nuance. What's the basis? You know, where's the Where's the human prize in all of this? And just making sure even the Broadband Commission doesn't get sort of beguiled by technology. I think it would have to be quality access for all peoples. And I think that, uh, you know, for me personally, it would be to actually establish that young people have the right to expect the same treatment online as well as off.